So the relevance of the topic is excellent. And my job was to introduce Chirag. I'm sure some of you who are watching this uh, webinar are likely to know him better than I do. He's always on all kinds of social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, and he has his profile which gives you a lot of knowledge of what he is all about. And to that extent, you know him. So I thought I will introduce him and attempt to share with you, which some of you may not know, or some things which are not written about him. There are a few things which are quite unique to Chirag, right from his young age, because I'm almost his father's age. So right from his young age, he has displayed an enormous ability to accept challenges and organize within the challenging environment, within the dynamic environment, and deliver excellent results as you would expect, and most of the times far greater than expected. So his organization skills stand out. Whether it's organizing a small golf tournament, or is organizing a class event, or is organizing, shall I say, a public event within a corporate uh, entertainment space at the end of the day, he has accepted responsibility and he has displayed that capability without any doubt. And that's probably one of the great reasons for his success in his current role. The other thing which stands out is whatever he does, he does with a great passion. I'm not saying he has the passion for what he's doing, but I'm saying the distinction is whatever he does, he does with a passion. Yes, he's passionate about something, certainly like golf and uh, trying to help people to reskill and reinvent. But what I want to highlight is that he is willing to display and takes on any kind of exercise with a passion. And that is something which enables him to be more successful or more frequently successful in whatever he does. So he is somebody who is has this unique uh, characteristics, the ability to organize without knowing what the thing is all about and without knowing what the final outcome should be or can be. So he is willing to plunge into that activity, take the risk, and I can assure you, and my experience suggests, he delivers enormously good results. And the other thing is, any activity which he undertakes, he takes it with passion. These are his two distinguishing uh, characteristics. He may have a few more, Besides the fact that he's a good golfer and he speaks well, he looks smart, he dresses smart, and he's able to display that he is always a willing helper to each and every person he interacts with. Now that's enough because if I keep talking, you will have no opportunity to hear from me. Thank you very much, Chirag, and all the very best. And let me see what you're going to teach the younger generation. Thank you so much, sir, for that uh wonderful introduction. I was actually a bit scared as to what you're going to say because there are a lot of secrets uh, which are hopefully safe with you. But uh, I'm honored that you're here today and you've taken time out to introduce me. Thank you so much, sir. So I'm going to get back into uh, our talk today. So the question I was asking the audience was, uh, you know, typically when we are asked what is our greatest problem in life, people typically reply saying that, you know, it's paucity of time or we don't have enough uh, time to do what we like or we don't, uh, we're not content with how much we have or we're always comparing ourselves with others. And those are the typical answers that I have received over the years. But I think in my opinion, the greatest problem in our life is possibly not knowing what the real problem is. And what that means is that we are addressing the symptoms in life more times than we're actually addressing the problems. And because of that, we actually end up just scratching the surface. So the first, uh, the first takeaway from today's session for the audience probably would be that the, the whole idea of reinventing yourselves is all about changing your thinking first. And when I, when I say changing your thinking, I mean that you have to start asking yourselves, am I addressing the problem or am I addressing the symptom? Now, for example, stage fright. Stage fright is something that is a chronic issue with a lot of us. And I'm sure most of you on the webinar today would agree 
that if I were to request you to stand in front of 200, 300 people and deliver a speech, a lot of you would probably, you know, say that, hey, you know, I'll pass this opportunity and ask somebody else to do it. Now, is stage fright the problem or is that the symptom? You would agree that stage fright is probably the symptom. It is a result of another problem, right? So the problem, once you start going deeper into the root cause analysis, you'll realize the problem probably is the fact that maybe my hold of the English language is not good enough, or I don't have the kind of vocabulary to sustain a 40, 45 minute talk. Or for example, I'm not sure whether the, the audience will like how I look in front of them. I don't have that kind of stage presence or my body image is fairly low. So there are many thoughts going on in our minds. And once you start analyzing what are the actual, uh, what are the actual problems, then you will realize that you have to dig much, much deeper and then go into it. So that leads me into my second point, which is henceforth, the kind of conversations that we need to have within families or within uh, organizations or even with colleagues are should be issue based conversations and not incident based conversations. So this is when we actually start graduating to having adult discussions or adult talks saying that what is the issue? Because a lot of the times we are always doing incident based conversations, which are he said, she said, he did, she did. And these are largely inconclusive uh, discussions. They will never actually lead you to a logical conclusion. So we need to start having issue based conversations saying, what is the issue? Are we addressing the real problem, the real issue? Is it a trust issue? Do we not have the basic underlying trust between two people? When we say something, do we mean it? So is it a trust issue? Number one. Number two, is it an intent issue? Sometimes we want people to do something, but for some reason they're not doing it. Maybe they don't want to do it, you know? So you need to ask them is, I know, do you intend to do this? Because if they don't, they won't budge. So is it an intent issue? Thirdly, is it a capability issue? Maybe they can't do it or maybe they don't know how to do it. So do we need to train people? Do we need to counsel them? Do we need to, you know, give them some help? So these are the kind of discussions that I think all of us should start having. And it is, it is the first step in reinventing ourselves is that we are far more matured in our thought process than we were in the previous year. So uh, the second point, the third point, sorry, that I had was the environment is changing. And many a times we, uh, you know, we fight it. We are, we are extremely resistant of the fact that something's changing. And we just do not want to accept that there is change. Now, the first step to being able to enjoy the changing environment is to be able to tell yourself that I accept things the way they are. And within the boundaries that this ecosystem has set me, I will probably do my best. The moment we try to fight that, the moment we resist that change, then we are in a problem. We need to first of all accept to our own selves, yes, there is a whole change in the way life is going to be. These are the new restrictions that life has given me or the ecosystem has given me. What can I do best to my ability within this situation? So stop fighting the situation in our own head saying that, no, no, this is not the way. This is not the way. This is never, I will overcome this. I will fight this. I will fight this. The moment you keep saying that, you're actually digging yourself into a deeper hole. So tell yourselves, no, I accept it. Now I have maybe 10 more restrictions than I had earlier. And this is how I'm going to operate. This is my new, my new normal, if you may. Right. So accept change. <clears throat> The next point I wanted to talk about was, of course, uh, which, which goes you know, well with the reinvent word is uh, we all have a version of ourselves like our smartphones have. So we all have smartphones in today's day and age. And you'll notice periodically you will get an update or an upgrade saying that, you know, uh, uh, software update is available or an OS update is available. And typically we end up pressing yes or upgrade yes. And say 300, 400 MB gets downloaded and um, we don't actually know what has changed in the phone. So probably one or two icons changed on the face of the phone, but at the back end, you really don't know what has changed. But have you ever asked yourself that question? Why do I press yes? Why do I say yes, download or down, uh, upgrade that software? The reason we do that is because as human beings, we like new things. We get bored very easily, right? 
we have never been taught how to deal with boredom nothing in our lives has equipped us to deal with boredom so we are continuously trying to um, you know seek new things even if my phone is say a year old and it's doing absolutely fine i have a iphone 10 for example the moment i see a fancy ad for the iphone 11 pro i immediately start thinking to myself you know what i want that phone now i probably trade in this phone but i want that phone now i might not have even use 5% of the features of this phone why do we do that is because we like new things the same way the ecosystem that we are in likes new things from us so if chirag version 1.0 was prevalent in say 2019 20 then chirag needs to ask himself what is his new version 2.0 going to be in the next year or in the next quarter or in the next month because of which he can then expect new things from the ecosystem if he keeps bringing the same version of himself professionally and personally i don't think it's fair then to expect more from the ecosystem in terms of reward and recognition so you have to ask yourself have i upskilled have i upgraded myself have i brought a new version of myself to the fore and now yes i am justified in asking for new things so you need to sort of think deep into your own minds and say okay what are the things that i can upgrade can i be physically fitter can i you know probably better groom can i have better competency skills can i be better in my work can i learn a new language skill perhaps or can i learn a, a new musical instrument or can i go and connect with five or 10 people who i never possibly would have connected with can i work on my network there are so many things so many facets to the to the human being so we need to ask ourselves what is my new version going to be with each improving day and how can i bring the best version of myself on a daily basis to uh, to the environment so that is uh, you know that again is all about reinventing yourself and bringing new skills so there is a very interesting story a friend of mine told me in uh, singapore a couple of years back and uh, he said chirag uh, we live in two types of worlds one is the metaphysical world and one is the uh, the manifested world so the metaphysical world ladies and gentlemen is where we we think we envisage we vision we ideate right and those thoughts then eventually sort of transcend into the manifested world and they become reality so for example i in my metaphysical world envisage that one day we will have a webinar like this during the lockdown period and so many people will be on it and this is how the setting will be and i will request mr basim hopefully to come and introduce request him to come and introduce me and this is the way things will sort of flow and what is happening now is the manifested world it has now turned into reality right but it it was existing in the metaphysical world once upon a time now why i am emphasizing this is because we have to be very careful of the thoughts that are around us in the metaphysical world because they eventually go on to become reality they eventually go on to manifest themselves into what is going to be our reality so shita there are a couple of people whose uh, mics are unmuted uh, madhavi sagane and bharti trivedi can you just mute them please dekho to idhar hai ki idhar hai bharti trivedi is the phone is mute here and madhavi sagne thanks you uh, so having said that whenever you are thinking about something hence for please ask yourselves that you know i had heard a talk by chirag and he had talked about the whole metaphysical world am i am i thinking the right thoughts right now because this is eventually going to go and become my reality right so i have to watch myself i have to observe my thoughts and the moment i start getting into a negative sort of a mind frame saying that oh you know this is how it's going to be or this is how it's going to be i have to be cognizant of the fact that this is eventually going to become reality so the metaphysical world eventually goes on to translate into the manifested world so ladies and gentlemen that's that's a, that's an important take away from today to watch our thoughts and observe our thoughts there are some people who will always be very skeptical very pessimistic about everything and they'll say no no it's not going to happen they're very negative in their approach about things eventually things don't happen because in their own metaphysical world they've always sort of cursed it or they've you know you know be little bit to such an extent that it never gets a chance to actually become a reality so moving from that 
we've talked about uh, issues and incidences we've talked about how to address problems versus symptoms we've talked about changing uh, our thinking by accepting reality we've also talked about reinventing our skills through a better version and the metaphysical world this eventually has to lead into all of us now the homework for today's session for all of you if you may is probably to work out a performance a personal performance improvement plan and i don't think any of us have it till now it's there in our head that i want to do this and i want to change this about myself but nothing's ever written so the homework for today for all of us is to prepare a performance improvement plan which is on a personal level and see what are the changes you are going to make i don't believe in long term goals because i think they are very far fetched and the way the world is changing today there is no point in having long term goals have a weekly goal right start with a weekly goal saying that this week i am going to do these five things and if i don't do these five things i'll probably punish myself i'll not probably eat or drink what i like or go or meet whoever i want to i won't do that because i have not sort of done this so have that this thing saying that these are the five things i am going to do in this week and i have a proper performance improvement plan for myself and it includes exactly what i am going to do and how i am going to reinvent myself because there is a very nice book by marshall goldsmith where he says what got you here won't get you there so in our careers whatever skill set we have whatever virtues we have whatever value system we have whatever education we have received has got us till where we are and now it's very important to sort of reskill and reset our minds because what skills we are going to require for the new tomorrow are going to be very different so unless and until we take the car back to the garage and overhaul it it's not going to run another rally right it's already run a long rally and we wanted to run one more rally so please think about this improvement plan you can always write to me after the session is over saying chirag i have made my plan and these are the five points i'm going to work on and i can help you work with it because uh, typically what happens in lockdown periods is uh, you know we are restricted in terms of our movements so our daily routines have become extremely regimented and because of that we have become highly predictable and i think being predictable is not a very nice thing so my suggestion so for example if i were to spend 2 3 days with any of you i would be able to write down on a piece piece of paper what you would exactly do for the next one week at what time what you would be doing so don't become predictable try and turn your schedules on their heads so for example if you are exercising in the evenings normally after work maybe once in a while you can go and exercise in the mornings early in the mornings so try and do different different things so that your schedule doesn't become very predictable otherwise you know it becomes very regimented and extremely mundane so make sure that your schedules are not predictable because what happens is then we you know we've sort of then created an image of ourselves because predictability typically comes from an image that we build of ourselves that i have an image which is like this and that is why i am doing certain things in this pattern and when so i'm sure you'll agree with me a lot of us work very hard to sustain the images that we worked hard to build over the years so for example if we associate ourselves with certain brands i only wear a uh, i only wear gucci or i only wear prada or i only drive a mercedes benz so you will you see people who will probably go and borrow money to ensure that they end up you know they keep driving a mercedes and they are completely enslaved to the image that they have made of themselves that image has become larger than life so to sustain that image they will go to any extent to keep it and i think that is bordering on insanity so you have to ask yourself have i done that to myself have i become a slave to an image that i have created because that also is a certain way of being predictable and people can then sort of exactly gauge what you are doing when you are going to do it and don't become predictable people should not be able to say that this is what you are doing or this is what you are going to do and this person is going to you know need these things to sustain themselves so don't become slaves of your own image i thought that is something that we can learn through this lockdown period and uh, that brings me to the next point which is uh, so whenever we buy products and uh, we go and ask the shopkeeper or the manufacturer ye kaun se brand ka hai ya iska kya standard hai so you will see there is an isi mark or an iso mark these marks are basically certifications of a particular standard of a particular quality of manufacturing correct 
every different product has its own standards, own uh, marks of uh, certification. The same way, I feel that we as individuals, we as professionals, we even as homemakers should have our own mark of excellence on anything that we do in life. So if I am writing a document or if I am conducting a webinar series or if I am conduct, if I'm writing a letter for somebody or even if it is, you know, the way we keep our things, I think everything that we do in life, each one of us, ladies and gentlemen, should have our own personal marks of excellence on it. So somebody should be able to read a document and blindly say this has been written by Chirag, 100%. You know, Chirag's footprint is there on this. It's, it's, I, can, I can assure you that it is written by him. That mark of excellence we all must bring to whatever we do. And I remember seeing a very nice video on uh, WhatsApp where uh, Shah Rukh Khan was speaking at an awards function and he was sort of talking about Mr. Amitabh Bachchan and he said, uh, and he मेरा कद बड़ा नहीं तो माँ ने बोला कि बेटे मैं उनके फिजिकल कद की बात नहीं कर रही हूँ मैं उनके काम के कद की बात कर रही हूँ कोई भी काम ऐसे करो कि उस काम को गर्व हो कि तुमने उसे किया है so that that was a very nice way of saying that bring that level of excellence into whatever you do कोई भी काम ऐसे करो कि उस काम को गर्व हो कि तुमने उसे किया है moving on uh, <coughs> I think uh, something that we are now lacking because of the routines we are getting into, our uh, bodies have become slower, you know, because we are stuck at home. So uh, I'm not sure whether most of you are aware that we have something called muscle memory and the muscles sort of get indoctrinated with our daily physical movements. So if I, am, if I have become lethargic, the muscles start retaining that memory and that muscle memory generally makes me a very, very slow sort of a person and I lose my sense of urgency in doing anything. And that is not a nice place to be. So my suggestion folks would be to bring that sense of urgency on a daily basis in whatever we do. And I remember whenever I watch Virat Kohli, our Indian cricket captain batting, you'll notice even when the, when the bowler is not bowling a delivery, between two deliveries, you'll notice that Kohli is, is, a, is a busy body. He will be moving his helmet, he will, you know, uh, check his gloves, he will shuffle his pads, he will go and talk to his partner, he will check the he will check the pitch, he will go and look around for the field placements. He is extremely busy and that body language is very important for success. People who are like that are always busy bodies. They, are, they will never let, you know, it's that unforgiving second or that unforgiving minute. They filled it with each second and that is very important. There is no time to lose in anything. Even if even if you're reading, they're busy reading. Even if you're lying down, closing your eyes, they're busy lying down, closing your eyes. So when I say sense of urgency, I don't mean you have to be all over the place. What I mean to say is that do things quickly and with, and with, a, with a clear motive, with an agenda is, is what I mean. If you look at one of the uh, smallest microorganisms which we have, which is the humble ant, if you look at the ant, if you, for example, if you leave a single grain of sugar anywhere in your homes, you might have the best airtight, watertight, this tight windows. But the humble ant will eventually, it's so opportunistic, it will eventually find its way to that grain of sugar. Eventually, right? And it truly believes in sharing is caring, so it will bring all its friends with them. It will not come alone. So it's opportunistic, right? It's generous. And it will come in a disciplined manner. It will not come like us at the liquor shops, right? Making a big, uh, you know, big crowd there. They will come in a disciplined line. The humble small line. Imagine uska brain kahan pe, uska haat kahan pe, uska pair kahan pe. And he come in a proper disciplined line. So there is a, there is a decorum that they maintain. Then if you spray some water or put a brick on them or whatever, or kill a few ants, they will fight that water. 
they will not give up and sink immediately you will see them you know trying to crawl out of it so they don't give up even after that they will regroup and they will persevere and they will go around that obstacle so that perseverance is there and they will not leave until they have assured themselves that the last grain of sugar has been consumed only then will they actually get out of that whole situation so there's a lot to learn even from an ant we are human beings we are the most evolved species on earth we don't do have the things in the ant does think about it right so bring that sense of urgency back into your into your work into your daily routines into your body language my next point is uh, about the most important natural resource that we have as human beings which is energy without energy nothing's possible energy drives us to do what we are able to do we cannot function without energy now uh, if you look at energy the the moment you are actually unwell you will realize the importance of that energy so if you're is is probably not the best time to say if you're down with flu or down with fever but generally when we're down with flu or down with fever and we're lying on the bed that is the time when you realize the value of energy so you'll have your soups and your juices and your vitamins and your multivitamins and you'll try to regain that energy back right that is the actual time when you realize the value of energy yaar mere kaisa ho gaya mere yaar andar kuch energy nahi bacha hai now i want to introduce you to a concept called energy vampires right energy is the greatest natural resource that we have and we have to guard it fiercely i'm sure all of you are aware of the term vampires they are fictional characters who are you know blood sucking characters in movies etc energy vampires are they come in two forms one is they come in the form of people and two they come in the form of habits so people that can be family members unfortunately it can be spouses it can be friends it can be relatives anyone around you who you feel saps your energy when you're when you're talking to them when you're meeting them so for example people who are always negative you know you try to come up with an idea they'll shoot it down saying that ye ho hi nahi sakta ye kar hi nahi sakte tum before you even sort of had that discussion that's an energy vampire people who are always cribbing who are always pessimistic even if you're in a good mood and you're in a very cheerful mood and you meet them you know like kaisa hai yaar how is it going in that person like theek hai yaar chal raha hai baitha you know you suddenly feel your energy go three notches lower these people are massive energy vampires please guard against them fiercely and try and keep yourselves as as far as away possibly practically i'm not saying start leaving your spouses and start leaving your parents and you know ending relationships please don't do that but you know what i mean take the gist out of it of course the second energy vampire is habits habits such as extremely late nights a uh, lot of screen time lack of proper nutrition lack of exercise lack of fresh air a lot of us you know being being summer a lot of us are continuously breathing air conditioned and recycled air and trust me that's not good enough for us to sustain well you have to be out in the fresh air a lot and that can be a massive energy vampire as well so take this point of energy vampires very seriously and don't uh, allow your energy to be sapped by anybody coming towards the end of my talk i think we've been going on for how long now we've got uh, yeah for 5 10 minutes to go so two more points to share i think this crisis has uh, sort of taught us uh, you know a lot of things and it will eventually uh, separate the men from the boys and those who are you know really able to uh, tackle the bull by the horns and say that you know i'll fight it and i'll do my best in whatever situation i am in those will be the men who will actually you know uh, find success after this situation and i wanted to show you a, a quote which i liked i'm just going to share a screen if you don't mind just bear with me for a second please so the beautiful quote by sir winston churchill he was famously known to say this never let a good crisis go to waste churchill was known for many things he wasn't exactly the best friend to india but i think this quote is very pertinent in today's uh, time and age what he implied by this quote very clearly was that you can look at this crisis 
in two ways either it's a burden or it's an opportunity i choose to look at it as an opportunity to do better work to do good work we have to ask ourselves what do we look at it so i would like everyone listening to this talk today after this crisis over to find themselves on the side of the people who saw this as an opportunity not on the side of people who felt this was a burden on them so having said that um, i conclude my talk i hope i have been able to give you at least one or two new things uh, that you've learned from the session today if not all um, so i would be more than happy to take any questions if you have yoshita i think has enabled everybody's videos can i see everyone i can only see two three people i can see damini hi damini hi dipti hi sudhir hi manisha hi vasu hi rashmi hi pragati i can see uh, suddenly the names are disappearing now i can see ravi prashant sahu i think prashant sahu is in uh, calcutta upesh nilesh bansai zainab is there hi zainab suresh prasad hi varshani i can see uh, uh, i can see amit dipti anirudh thanks guys for joining i can't see i can't see most of the other videos i don't know for some reason they are off or maybe they have gone into the multiple screens because now we've got three four screens that have happened here so guys any questions for me uh priyanka upadhyay saying hi chirag thank you so much can you reiterate about accepting change specific to the current situation so i think the current situation priyanka is is there for everybody it's a universal situation you know we are always used to situations which happen to other countries us desh mein ye hua hai hamare desh mein nahi hota hai ye sab pehli baar aisa hua hai ki it's affected us also it's affected our country also so you can't really fight it and there is going to be uh, you know a sort of a fall out of this whole situation people are going to lose jobs people are going to get laid off people are going to need to reskill themselves so how are you going to fight this you know the, the the kind of talks that i hear around me nowadays it's india aisa hi hota hai modi ji kuch nahi kar rahe government kuch paisa nahi de rahi ye kuch nahi kar raha hai wo kuch nahi kar raha hai there is a limit to how much those talks can help you yes have those discussions i see people talking about corona virus and the, and the pandemic the whole day why don't you monitor the number once and find out is there any new information from the government and that's the end of the discussion it's an important topic for all of us today it affects all of us but let's restrict that talk to maybe 5 10 minutes in the house and say yes it's an important topic we will discuss it but we will stop discussing it after 10 minutes rather than fighting that situation you know limit limit the negativity and you know try and talk about things that you can do people are always talking about things that others should do how about changing the discussion and saying you know what i am going to do these five things by tomorrow not you know indefinitely so i thought that was something um, can you tell us a few ways to get out of our comfort zone in order to reinvent ourselves i think uh, amit that's a great question most of us have got into regimented lives because of the lockdown what we can do is first of all um, there has to be some level of military style discipline and the reason the armed forces work in a certain way the reason they function whether there's a famine whether there's a drought whether there's a war or whether there is a pandemic the reason they are able to perform their duties and the armed forces don't become dysfunctional is because they are highly disciplined right they will get up at 5 am or 4 am regardless they will patrol the border regardless they will fire their guns and they will go and check on the enemy movements regardless they don't have the luxury to sleep in and have a netflix night right they have to perform or we perish so that military level of discipline has to come into ordinary citizens why do you think countries like israel korea germany singapore have compulsory military training it is to instill a certain amount of discipline from a young age into the into an ordinary citizen i am waiting for the day when india starts that i think every indian should go to military school you know learn that basic discipline so that we remain fit and perform in a in a fit way 
so that is the only way to come out of comfort zones is to have that solid discipline any other questions folks all right so i think we've come to the <laughs> I, how does one stay consistent and stick to the personal performance plan? Uh, I think uh, short short goals is one thing. The moment you say this is my monthly goal, you lose interest. But if you give yourself a very short goal, saying this is my daily goal, this is my hourly goal, then the interest is there. So start giving yourself daily and weekly goals rather than getting into a long term goal. That is the only way to, you know, stay consistent in whatever we do. And the second thing is that you have to be punitive towards yourself. You know, why should we wait for somebody else to say that you've not done this? So I'll reprimand you. I think we should start reprimanding ourselves. If I am not exercising, if I am not working out, if I am not looking after my fitness, well, I will not eat that chocolate cake, which is made at home. Or I will not have that chilled beer, which is there in the fridge. Because I will punish myself saying that, hey, I have not worked out today, so I don't deserve to have that. The moment you do that, then both things start working in tandem. Right? So I thought, I think that's the only way to stick to a personal improvement plan and remain consistent in, our, uh, in how devoted we are to, our, to ourselves. Any other questions, folks? Please uh, leave your comments or your feedback in the chat box if you like. Um, nice to hear from all of you. And all or those of you who have my WhatsApp number, please, please do share. So thank you very much for your time. I once again apologize for the delayed start. Uh, it was unavoidable, as uh, Masin Saab said, he had some technical issues, but it was nice of him to join us. I thank each one of you for joining the call. For those of you who have not seen on the camera or not said hi to, thank you once again, and uh, hope it was a nice talk. And I will see you soon. So take care and enjoy the rest of the lockdown and don't forget to reinvent yourselves.